Welcome back to the fourth installment of this mini-series on Clan MV. In this video, we are going to build on the previous video and extend the functionality of text-based signatures to create powerful signatures that can use logic to determine if a file is malicious. The first thing we need to remember is that logical signatures do not reside in the same signature file as signatures we worked on in the last video. Those signatures were stored in the .ndb signature file. If you're going to build signatures that use logic, you need to remember to store them in a .ldb file. The simplest logical signature is simply a restructured basic signature that we created in the last video. Let's take a look at how that would work. If we wanted to make a logical signature that worked similar to mytest.any.php.1, which is simply a PHP tag followed by eval base64 decode dollar underscore cookie within 100 characters, and turn that into a logical signature, what we could do is take the hexadecimal representation of eval base64 decode dollar underscore cookie, which is right here, and simply create a mytest.ldb file, enter our signature name, mytest.php.base64l, just so that we know that it is our logical signature, dot zero, followed by a semicolon to separate the signature name from the target block, target zero for any file, a comma to separate the different parts of the target description block, 81 to 255 to represent our engine features that we're interested in, then a semicolon to separate the target block from the logical expression. And since this is a simple logical expression with only one term, we only need to put in a zero to match the zeroth subsignature. And now that we have this in place, we can paste in our hexadecimal signature. And then if we add in a double semicolon followed by an I, we now have a case insensitive subsignature. If we save this and then put this through sig tool decode sigs, we see that we have our logical expression that says it has to match zero. And then here's the description of that subsignature. We see that it is no case and has an offset of any. We now have a very basic logical signature. It doesn't seem like much, but there's a lot of power in this signature format. In addition to the letter I, there are a number of other modifiers that can be used. For instance, if you want to match wide characters, you can use the W or full word, which would delimit the subsignature by non-alphanumeric characters, or you could match everything's ASCII characters. That doesn't seem like much of an improvement over the basic text signatures. But what happens if you run into a situation where the strings in our sample might be in different orders? Maybe we have two strings of interest and only want to alert if we see both of them, regardless of the order they appear in. Here we have an HTML document that has a document listener in it that performs some action on the presented content of the page. For the sake of argument, let's assume that this is malicious and that we want to create a signature for it. If we leave the temps and set the tempter here and then test it to create our initial signature, here we have our no comment file. Let's create a plain body-based signature for this. We will start by taking the title. Let's assume that that is something of interest for us and sending that into the appropriate text dump. And now we're interested in, for example, that string. Well, we could say that we want it within 100 characters of the end of the title. So we take this and here we have our mytest.ne.js signature. And we can scan this file again and see that it does detect as that signature. But now, if we take our test file and make a new version of it, where we take our title, place it after the script, now all of a sudden, when we scan the same file, which would have the exact same effect on the end user, we see that it's not detected. Now, we could simply make another signature here and swap these two strings around, or we could make a logical signature. My test dot js evil core the engine has to be the first argument in the target block and now what we want to say is zero and one and then we can take our title tag and our javascript of interest and now if we test this we see that we have detected our evil corp javascript in here the exact same strings in a different order simply because of the logic
And logic can get more complex from there. You could create, for example, a signature that detects multiple title tags. To do that, you could say 0 or 1 greater than 1, so these have to match more than one time, and then the less than title greater than, and then here is the closing title tag. And if we take a look at the logical expression, these have to match more than one time. Just to make this clear, this will match on every HTML document that has a title tag, because it is looking for more than one match to any of the signatures, which means that the open title tag and the closed title tag will match on every title that is in an HTML document. Additionally, the target block can contain more information than just the types of files or the types of engine features that are needed for the signature to match. For PE binaries, it also contains the same entry point and section information that we used in body-based signatures. Additionally, you can specify those specifically for sub-signatures as well. Previously, if we had one signature that we wanted to look for the entry point with an offset of 123, test 0 EP plus 123, and then our signature, and we had a second one that was looking at the first section with an offset of 234, looking for that string, our only option would be to have these as two separate signatures in the body-based signature format. However, in a logical signature, we can combine those to say that we want both signatures, 0 and 1, and EP plus 1, 2, 3, and then the section 234, and now in one signature we have the same functionality of the two signatures in the body, but combined into a single signature, so that way we only match if both of these are true. If we wanted to duplicate the functionality of the two signatures, then all we need to do is change the 0 and 1 to be a 0 or 1, and now we have both of those signatures that we made in the body-based format combined as a single signature in the logical format. This allows us to use two sub-signatures that, on their own, might not be indicative of an issue, but when combined, might be highly indicative of malware without needing to write a massively complicated signature that might generate false positives if those sub-signatures match things in other parts of the file. As an extension of this as well, the target block can also include a field that specifies the number of sections as a range, allowing you to only target executables with a specific number of sections and making the SL offset more predictable without making, for example, S3 some arbitrary section in the executable. S3 might be the last section, but when number of sections is 4, could be used to make an SL section reference equivalent to section S3. Alternatively, if you know that the malware you're looking for only has one or two sections, you can limit the number of sections to one to two and be sure that your signature will only ever trigger on executables with that many sections. The last target block field that can be of particular value is the file size field, which unsurprisingly allows you to specify the range of sizes that something has to be in order to match the rest of the signature. If you have a particularly small signature, for instance, eval base 64, and you only want to report it if it's the only thing in the file, you can use the file size field to limit your signature to files that are between, say, 25 or 50 bytes in size. For example, here we have test PHP. It's 46 bytes in size. If we wanted a logical signature to trigger on a file that is only 25 to 50 bytes in size, then this is how you would do it. We're looking for, we're only running in Clem AV engines that are within this feature set, looking at any target, but the target has to be 25 to 50 bytes in size and matches no case on this particular string. So if we were to scan this small file, looking for all of the signatures that match, we get a return that small eval is present. If we were to look at test 4, which is 80 characters in size, and scan this, we see that small eval is not present in this file. And that is entirely due to the fact that the file size is 80 bytes for test 4, and we were limiting our signature to 25 to 50 bytes. In addition to what we've talked about, 
there is another expansion on the logic that can be performed, and that is the use of whole compatible regular expression subsignatures. With Keycree, we can write a logical signature that uses logic and a regular expression as an additional subsignature. We can see an example of that here. Looking at this PHP eval base 64.1, what we have is a signature that is targeted at any file and requires a match only on subsignature 2. However, subsignature 2 is a regex that says that it starts with PHP, but it's triggered if subsignature 0 or 1 are matched, and subsignature 0 or 1 are matching on host or request. As a note, the engine field in the target block has to be present for signatures that involve a regular expression subsignature. And the regular expression subsignature cannot be preceding any signatures that it depends on. So we can't make the regular expression be subsignature 1 and have a trigger of subsignature 2. Standard keycree modifiers like multiline, case insensitive, and s, so that a dot matches all white space, as well as others, are able to be used at the end of this keycree expression as the C flags. Additionally, there is no requirement that the keycree be the absolute last of the subsignatures. For example, you could say 2 and 3, and then put another subsignature at the end here. For example, eval base 64 decode. And now, what this signature is looking for is PHP to be starting the file. It is looking for a post or a request, and it is looking for an eval base 64 decode. One of the major benefits of using keycree subsignatures is the ability to use wildcards in the expression itself. For example, if you have a signature that's looking for PHP eval base64 decode when normalized, this is required to have only one space between the PHP tag and the eval base64 decode. However, in a keycree subsignature, we could have PHP eval base64 3 and now, this expression is looking for post request, which would then trigger a check to see that the file starts with PHP 0 to 100 characters followed by an eval. And lastly, constructs such as character classes are easier to do with a pre expression than in a hex signature alternative format, and they are not subject to the same length limitations that the hex alternative format is limited to. Take, for example, this file. It defines a PHP class and has a construct function as well as additional functions that perform various operations. And then it defines several variables, including ones that are clearly gz inflate, create function, base64 decode, set cookie, and string replace. And then it defines a variable that is a long string of base64 characters and spaces and then second variable that is a much shorter base64 string with spaces. If we were to do this in a body-based signature, we would have to exclude this large chunk of text from being in the signature, simply because it is too large and, to be honest, too variable to properly create an alternative that works. What we could do instead is create a logical signature that looks for certain characteristics within the file and then also has a pcre expression at the end to capture the two large base64 variables. So, for example, what we could do is set up our logical signature here. Within this, we could take our class, and you'll notice that I didn't take the actual class name, and that's because, in my experience, this has changed with different iterations of this particular file. But what we can do is take this first string here and do something along the lines of 7 to 15 to give it a range, and then what we can do is we can set our trigger to be that first subsignature, and then have $W star. We can create a character class that looks for equal and spaces, then we can have our single or double quote, and then here we can define the character class of all word characters, the plus, the forward slash, the equals, and white space, followed by another quote, and now semicolons, because they're field delimiters in the signature, have to be expressed as a hex character instead within the regular expression, followed by another similar expression. And then, because this is typically the end of the file, we can then do a new at the end there. And now, because we want this all on one line, and we want our wildcards to include white spaces, although we don't have any of those, and we want it to be case insensitive, 
Now, let's see if this detects the original file. And lo and behold, it does. So now we have a signature that detects the class definition followed by this specific set of code and the fact that there are two base64 encoded variables at the end of the file before it gets the call to create the new class. Hopefully this illustrates the power of logical signatures and will encourage you to dive deeper into the full power and functionality that ClamAV has in its signature format. In the next video, I'll go over how to handle false positive cases and whitelists. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live. And leave a comment if you have a question or feedback. See you next time.